Let's see, how do I do this? We don't know. Token layer. Okay, are you guys seeing these happening? Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Something's happening, like spaceships are showing up. Uh, you <laughs> notice two sentry guns descend on either side. Two sentry guns descend on either side of the food prep area. Oh, shit. And hey, attempt to be an automated defense system. Amen. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I'll go ahead and reveal. Normally this would happen a lot sooner, but Raymond was actually able to take out the uh, the resident Decker, <laughs> who was the cook, who was in the back room. <laughs> um, but the sentry yeah, guns, the yeah, the sentry guns do automatic. They're also going to have them activate at the end of the combat turn, which was now. So now starts a new combat turn, and these sentry guns have just descended. Um, however, you notice they cannot uh, fire. Um, they're only on a rotational thing. They're not on like a ball, so they can't actually fire um, below themselves. Does that makes sense. So they're above our heads. Yes, they are on the they are on the ceiling. They just descended from like panels on the ceiling, and they're on little rotational things. And they're both I can't really point diagonally, but they're both kind of facing the lobby area. <laughs> Actually, I guess I can't okay. turn. It. Oops, no. So they can't shoot down. There we go. That's kind of the direction they're facing. So that one could shoot me, but the one next to me couldn't shoot me. They kind of what you're saying. Right. So they're meant to shoot at the lobby, and uh, but they can't shoot directly beneath themselves. <laughs> What, the lo what, what do you consider the lobby? Where the doors are? Uh, no, the uh, actual eating area in here. Dining area. Oh. Yeah. So you notice, um, actually, where most, where all the drones are, and where the decker is, they wouldn't be able to shoot at that. They're actually just facing. Uh, this one can't actually rotate over there. Oh, okay. They're forced. They're they're faced. They can't turn 360. Right. 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 Okay. What a weird world we live in. <laughs> <laughs> Upgrade so, your sentry turrets, guys. Everybody roll initiative again. And as the sentry turrets descend, this guy steps back out. Um, because normally, a literally, everybody's initiative pass lasts about three seconds. So this shit was all happening, like, super quickly. So now that you've seen all the bullets fly, these, the defenses, the automated defenses have obviously come on. This guy steps out of the office and... Uh, notices, immediately notices this guy on the floor, crumpled down, um, just completely out of it. Um, he looks up, assesses the situation, and we'll enter the combat. Did I turn? I didn't mean to turn off the... Okay. Do we need to get rid of the order again? So do I need to turn this off and then do another one, or how does this... Hang on. Okay. Let me turn all these... Uh... Oh, wait, did you guys roll? Okay, hang on. I'll just turn all these off. You gotta reset it somewhere. Yeah, I don't know how to do that. You're just scrolling through the. No, yeah, I am just scrolling, aren't I? Um. Can you just get like the whole thing? Ah, uh, there we go. Okay. okay. So now, do it again. now do it again. Everybody do initiative again. Oh, by the way, our troll orc friend has absolutely retreated to like this corner right here. He doesn't want any part of this shit. <laughs> I figured. Yeah. Some college student like. He is not wanting any of that crap. And I have a little less guys to take track of now. I'm not even going to roll for the uh, janitor's initiative. He hasn't come out of the bathroom yet. I rolled a 13, by the way. Oh, shit. I selected the wrong guy, didn't I? Uh, Can you see my roll? Uh, no, you have to select your token first. Okay. And then you have to do it. Okay. This guy. Jesus, All right, I'll take the one. There you go. <laughs> and then this guy. So I think I just have those three. And then I actually don't know how these sentry turrets are going to work. <laughs> I don't have initiative scores for them. Um, since they are automated. I mean, you said that the resident decker is taken out, so that mean anybody's controlling it? Well, but they have their own, I guess it'd be like your rigor system, Chris, where they have their own autopilot system to... The dog brain, yeah. Yeah, the dog brain to just fire on 
um, any hostile threats at this point. And uh, you guys wouldn't know this, but it is coded to um, not fire on the Fratellis, so... That makes sense. That would be a reasonable, reasonable assumption. Yeah. Um, so how do you determine that their initiative is whenever you go, right? So I don't know how to do an unmanned remote control vehicle. Device reading times two. Just straight. Okay. Okay. As far as I can tell, a lot of the default comes down to device rating. Uh, how do I add the? Let's see. Add it. Ah, cool. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't know how to add them. So, oh, oh, okay. There you, you go. said device it's rating German. times two. Yeah. Okay, so they each have a six then. So they will go last for sure. All right, so <laughs> it's not very uh, quick on the uptake. No, his no, his stats are actually he's terrible. Tough. He's tough, but you guys took out the most powerful guy, which did take all of you to take him out. <laughs> um, all right, Adept is first. What do you do now that you're entering this little conflict right here? All right, uh, I'm gonna go up one and then try to punch that guy in the face. Punch this guy in the face? That guy in the face. Okay. <laughs> this, this poor guy. <laughs> we don't know what his deal is. Who's been really nervous and just wanted to shoot this guy. Suddenly you just burst out across the lobby <laughs> and just <laughs> fly in <laughs> with, a, <laughs> with a fist to take. I just want to shoot the other guy. That's all. We need, we, yeah, we need, we need Vic uh, Fraternity alive to get the woman back, right? Uh, you don't know what you need because you did not talk to him. He gets one success, so that punch is definitely going to punch that dude out. Um, the damage of your fists is five plus three net successes. That's eight damage coming into our poor bastard friend. Should have done that killing touch thing and just is... murdered him. That's true. You can choose. Well, you can still. You want to apply physical or stun damage because you have the killing hands. I don't know. Uh, we, don't know, we don't know what the guy's story is, so we probably just want to stun him. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so I said that was eight damage, he absorbed six of it, so he will take two damage. For all we know, this is the son of the guy that we're trying to get the daughter back for. Uh, two stun damage? Two stun damage he, that he takes, yes. His armor actually absorbed uh, quite a bit of that below. Alright, Mr. Rigger, you're next. Oh boy. Um, shoot, what, what, what is moving around? Is that a free action or a simple action or what? I believe you can... I should know that. I, just uh, to I think yeah. walking, walking should be free. Or simple, wait. Declare, declare actions. Walking does not take up any actions, but running requires a free action. Oh, it doesn't. Okay, so I'm gonna. So you can actually, spaces. yeah, walk two spaces for nothing. I don't. I don't really want to get behind. So first, I'm gonna actually command. Well, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna command my roto drones to attack this front sentry gun to move forward and attack this front sentry gun. Um. So I'm gonna have them move first. Wait. So could I have been doing the critical strike unarmed? It's already, it's already built, built into your stats, I believe. So I'm going to actually duck behind the counter here. Hope that this sentry gun right above my head can't see me. Okay. And I'm going to do a control device on the steel links again. And try to take out this back uh, turret. Steel links is going to fire on that back turret. So that's gunnery. Any, any modifiers? Uh, no. That's terrible. <laughs> Fuck you, Steelix. <laughs> <Damn. laughs> 
I don't even know what to roll for the sentry turret, to tell you the truth. Uh, it's body plus something else. Well, he doesn't have a body, though. It's a sentry oh. turret. I thought, I thought all... Is it just a vice uh, rating? Is, like, all, rating I, times all I have for it, yeah. I think it's the only information I have. Okay. Yeah, most, as far as I knew, most electronics had, like, those basic stats. Some kind of armor or structure. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, if not, I would just use device rating as, like, whatever the base stat is. Okay. Oh, wait, oh, wait. each... Oh, well, it tells me what their offense is. It doesn't tell me their defense, though. Pistol skill 3 and inflict damage value of 5. That's not mm. our real defense. So we'll do... Yeah, we'll do 6 dice. Uh, doesn't matter who that rolls. One success, so it is able to <laughs> shrug off the plink, plink, plink coming at him. <laughs> Alright, that's the end of my turn. Well, what did I tell my things to do? I told them to, I told them to fire at the front turret, so I guess I could better do that. Um... Or, or no, are we, are we doing the... Are we not doing the negative two anymore? Not, they're flying and they're shooting at the ceiling. So are yeah, they modifiers? Yeah, no, they're good. Okay. Last one's not terrible. I guess I need to roll each attack, don't I? I don't. I, I don't know how that works actually. I don't even know if I'm supposed to be rolling one for each guy or if this is supposed to be one for all. But yeah. Uh, what'd you roll? Two two four. Uh, two two four. Yeah. Two two. First four. two don't work. Yeah, the last one will hit him. Uh, how much damage does the drone do? I think you've got the same gun on him. Uh, the Ares. Um, Ares Alpha. Yeah, that's 11 with an AP of minus 2. Okay, so the drone does manage to tag this gun and seems to shoot enough to where the barrel of the gun kind of crumples and uh, the whole thing suddenly makes a weird sparking sound and then kind of flaws a little limp. <laughs> <laughs> so. Alright, so that front turret doesn't seem to be much of a problem anymore. That's yeah. good. All right, is that the end? That is the end. All right, All right Shaman, you're next. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poker. Shut up. Shut up. Um, okay. Let's see here. I don't know how to shoot from here. If my table dancing continues. Yeah, you're still table dancing currently. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. Bro, you can probably reach up and touch that sentry gun. Yeah, that so uh, that sentry gun won't be able to target you because you're um, still beneath it. Well, you got the manager and that sentry gun, and then you got the two guys down below. Yeah. <clears throat> Did that sentry turret blue really roll a zero, or did you just not roll for anything? For what? The, the blue sentry gun? Or he's died. Okay. So, he just didn't put the initiative turn for it. Okay. So. Oh, shit. How about, how about if. But yeah, it's dead. I start moving closer to where Reese is. You want to move towards the lobby? Yeah. Okay. Um. Then I'm gonna levitate, Mr. Nia Verdalis, whatever the hell. Nia Verdalis. Because he'll be in my line of sight if I just move right here. Okay, this guy? Yes. Okay. Mr. Cranky Pig. <laughs> so, where's my thing? So, let's see here. People, or 
objects. I can pick up whatever the hell I want. So... This is a spell. I have to pick my force, right? Yep. So we'll do seven again. That seems to be my lucky number. So... And then I roll my spell casting? Yep. Okay. Any modifiers? Uh... No. Pretty clear still. <laughs> Holy crap. Alright, so... You have to beat a threshold equal to the subject's mass divided by 200 kilograms. Um, <laughs> I don't know what the fuck how heavy this guy is. <laughs> um, translate pounds and so he, well he looks pretty heavy, but based on the picture. Equal the threshold equals so just mass divided by two hundred kilograms rounded up. Yeah, I don't know. We'll just say um, that yes, <laughs> it works. <laughs> <laughs> so now he's floating. In the air. <laughs> <laughs> so he looks very shocked, and uh, suddenly his body begins to rise towards the ceiling, and uh, he attempts to hang on to his gun, and I'll make him roll. Um, Drop it. Drop it. He's going to have to roll agility, and he is surprised, so I'll give him a minus one, so we'll do a four. And if he gets two or more hits, he hangs on to his. Or no, if he gets a, if he gets three or four hits, he hangs on to his gun. All right, he hangs on to his gun as he falls to the top <laughs> of the ceiling. Bounces <laughs> off the ceiling. Uh, and then roll for a drain. Oh yeah. Which is whatever the levitate says. So you get a seven minus. Was it two? The average so male mass five. in North America is 80.7 kilograms. Wait, so I divide that by 200 kilograms? I think you divide, I think you divide 200 by that. That would, that would only make sense. Divided by 200 kilograms, rounded up. That would give you a one. Uh oh. I didn't go so well. Um. So you take three. three stun damage. Yeah. Oh no. Yeah, you take three stun damage. Bit of a bit of a bite on that spell. Yeah. Yeah. Or if it can make him kiss the ceiling. <laughs> that is definitely gonna affect his combat turn. Uh, Decker, you're up next. I would like to hack into that last turret. Okay. You will roll your. Uh, whatever your hacking, whatever skill you use for the metal detector is the same thing. No modifiers. Three successes. Uh, you are just able to place a mark on it, um, which means you have um, the beginnings of control, but you don't have control over it yet. You will need uh, two marks to be able to fire the gun. Uh, next is this guy, who has suddenly had a crazy turn of events happen to his fight. Um, <laughs> he got punched in the jaw, and then his opponent is now floating in the air. <laughs> so, he is actually going to uh, drop his gun. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. Yeah, and he is just going to crumple to the ground and just start crying. <laughs> Good job, Rich. Fist accomplished. <laughs> <laughs> you big bully, you. I uh, there's not really a crying icon. We'll do this little ninja one. So he's just he's very sad. Emotionally incapacitated. Yeah. All right. Next we have this guy up here gets to go. And at the manager. Yeah. That is the manager. He is going to attempt to, um, he kind of um, puts his hand around a necklace that starts glowing, and he starts mumbling some words. 
Oh shit. Oh shit. And points them at the nearest guy next to him, which is uh, Chris right now in the food prep area. I did duck behind the counters. I don't. I don't know if those are counters or not. If they are counters, I try. They to are counters. Yeah. Okay. He uh, uh, he can sense that there's somebody in there. Okay, yeah, just, uh, yeah. I'm still doing things back there. Yeah. So he's gonna roll his spell casting. Uh, we're gonna set his force at a. Let's see what is the spell casting? It's pretty terrible. Put his force at a four. And he is going to cast Agony on you. Oh shit! He gets one good. success. Uh, so you can resist it by rolling your uh, willpower, just your willpower. So just do a quick roll of whatever your willpower is. Where's that one listed at? Just your attribute willpower. Oh, three. Okay. All right, you feel a funny sensation coming, but it quickly leaves as you are able to uh, will yourself to ignore uh, whatever he's trying to do. And then he is spending a uh, a free action by like kneeling down and try to protectively like covering his downed comrade here. And then we have our floating friend, <laughs> who is. Um, Wildly upset at his predicament, he is going to attempt to shoot at the uh, spellcaster, um, but he is going to take a terrible penalty because he is floating in the air. <laughs> it's hard to aim when you're just spinning wildly. It is pretty hard. So he is going to take a minus four modifier. Bounce off that roof. And yeah, he is just shooting. Just. <laughs> Pretty wildly because of that. I like to imagine the like force of the shot just propelled him backwards. Yeah, it kind of spins it's him back a little bit. It just spins him in place. <laughs> <laughs> He's like a ceiling fan. Um, you know what? I will roll to see if he takes any damage from hitting the ceiling because of that maneuver. He is a. Let's see, what would that be? Let's do uh, agility. To see how much stun damage he takes. Alright, he will take some stun damage. Alright, so the sentry turret is now active still, and it will fire on. See, so we can pretty much see the lobby. Um, it will shoot at the adept down here. Oh no! Next to the crying man. Pistol skills of three. So we'll just double that since nobody's operating it right now. Make it a six attack. Yeah, next to the crying man. <laughs> <laughs> Two hits. So, Adept, roll your defense with no modifiers. Because you're not technically in melee combat anymore, since that guy is sobbing at your knees. Asking you to roll You're defense. Who is? What do you? You need to roll defense against the sentry turret. <laughs> the sentry turret. Oh. One of them's not. One of them fired at you. I see. Raymond has partial control over it, but not full control. All right, you are able to dodge the sentry turret's plank plinking. <laughs> Alright, so everyone goes again with the initiative pass, which is going to be Adept, Decker, Shaman, or Adept, Rigger, Shaman, Decker, and Crying Man. 
<laughs> so all of us get to go and they don't. That's good. Yeah. So initiative score matters quite a bit. Actually, I take back what I said. Uh, what do you want to do? I want to kick that guy on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> You're going <laughs> to... I take that. I'll, I'll give you something to cry about. <laughs> I'm going to teabag him. I'm going to waste the turn just to kick him. <laughs> Jesus. I'm going to attempt to hold a conversation with the gentleman up on the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> um, very well. <laughs> you may attempt to engage conversation. Alright. Uh, I was listening to the guy who gave us this assignment, but you might know something about a daughter or something. Maybe? Uh, as Vic is spinning through the air, he attempts to get his hands out to stop him. He looks like he's sweating profusely and uh, looks quite out of shape for a man spinning through the air. And he says, uh, oh shit, did that asshole elf send you assholes? <laughs> I believe so, yes. Uh, he's, he seems to be spinning, uh, he finally writes himself. Um, he says, uh, get me the fuck down from here and we can talk. Okay. Uh, do we need to wait for Heather's turn or? Uh, you, you can tell Heather to. Release him. <laughs> Do you mind releasing him so we might have a friendly chat? Does he still have his gun in his hand? Don't drop the gun. <laughs> yeah. He saw what I did at the crying game. <laughs> <laughs> I, I made that man cry. <laughs> yeah, it, drop, your, drop your gun first, and then we can have a talk. Uh, he hesitates for a second, and... Uh, he bounce his head off the wall again. <laughs> yeah, his head, his head hits the wall again, and he finally, uh, he drops the gun. Is that all of your guns? He, and knives. He says, that's it, that's it. Uh, Frankie, I'm coming down. Put your damn gun down. He kind of shouts that across the lobby. And, uh, and, uh, this guy back here is like, yeah, yeah, fine, fine, fine. Just get him down, get him down. We murdered everyone else. Yeah. Yeah. He, he, he looks at this guy who's still like bleeding out, and he just kind of <laughs> nods and says, "All right, all right." That's an easy fix for us, doesn't it? One bleeding guy. <laughs> Get our way. And the guy that's in the bathroom is probably dead by now. <laughs> <laughs> that poor janitor. <laughs> He just got what ripped apart by a fucking tank that came in. What an hey, amazing way to die, too. Probably like, into a restroom. It's only been six seconds since he went in there. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's well, three, three... Is it per combat turn or per everybody's phase? I think it might be everybody's phase is three seconds. I thought three seconds per combat turn. I'd have to look that up. That seems really quick, though. Like, everybody's happening simultaneously. Maybe, I don't know. Um, Alright, I'll let him down. Alright. After I've head on the wall. <laughs> do you let him down gently, or do you just drop him like a sack? Oh, I'm gonna drop him like a sack. Okay. <laughs> he hits the ground, and he just makes a large grunting sound. And he picks himself up and attempts to, like, straighten his jacket, but he's he's heavily breathing out. And he says, uh, Alright, alright, you assholes, we get the picture. And he, uh, he's, he's, got his, he's got his hands in the air. And uh, he kind of nods to uh, his buddy over. Do I have my fist pointed at him? Huh? huh? Do I have my fist pointed at him? Is that <laughs> <Your> fist pointing <laughs> at him? <laughs> he, he nods at you. He's like, yeah, yeah. I got you. The girl's in the goddamn freezer. Just get her and get the hell out. We'll call it squares. The freezer? She's still alive? He he kind of nods at, uh, at this guy. He says, uh, Frank, go get her. This guy uh, walks over to the freezer, uh, opens the freezer door, and Moxie, whom I'm sorry I did not make a token for, um, spills out of it and jumps on him in a monkey attack and starts wailing on this guy's head. And uh, Frankie is astonished and staggers back, and as you look into the freezer, you see that the there's another guard in there who is unconscious and like slumped against a crate of frozen food that she's knocked on top of him. 
Nice job. Is that the guy that got his hand burned? <laughs> yeah, where the guy with the burned guy go? Where was he? That was at him. Uh, no, the burned guy is actually up here in the storeroom. He is oh, in a okay. different area. Gotcha. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try to extricate her and just tell her that we're here to rescue her <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I need to hack this turret. It's still on. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. It's the turret, the yeah. defense, yeah. Frank Frank went ahead and went on the control panel. He flips in a few numbers, and the turrets uh, ascend back up into the ceiling. Okay. Yeah, we tell. I, I'll, I'll extricate her from the manager and tell her we're here to take her home. Oh, thank God! I heard all the gunshots and the screaming, and I was. <laughs> I was scared, but I knocked this guy out, and I figured whoever was opening that door was getting a fistful of moxie. <laughs> why did they take so, you? It yeah, was, you know why they took you? I don't know. I think my father was supposed to pay them protection money or, or something. I just got jumped outside of a club, and they put me in this freezer, and I'm fucking cold. <laughs> How much protection money? I just want to go home. <laughs> You'll have to ask him. I don't know my father's businesses. Hey, Vic, how much protection money? Um, Vic, who's been trying to, like, edge over <laughs> to, like, the entrance, now notices that it's covered in little robot flying helicopters. <laughs> Vic, I'll make you levitate again. <laughs> um, let me look up the information for this. Um, he says, uh, all right, all right, yeah, we figure uh, this Hampton guy, right? He was always paying up the last moment and giving us just at the very end and paying the very minimum of what we asked, so we figured he was holding out on us, so uh, we might have squeezed him a little bit, uh, stolen a few merchandise, uh, you know, tried to tried to get what we figured was part of our due share, right? Then all of a sudden he can't pay us anymore, so we gotta squeeze him some more. That doesn't sound like an answer to me. <laughs> Sounds reasonable. <laughs> how, how much per year does your operation net? <laughs> Are we taking it over? Okay with that. That might be a plan. <laughs> you got the girl, just get out of here and I won't mention your stupid names to my boss. Who's your boss? Oh, you stepped into the shithole now. This is the Fratellis you're messing with. This is one of our main establishments that you just shot up and wrecked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We coming after you and Hampton. You won't have a safe place to go. You think she's safe? Well, now we gotta murder you, man. Drone C, snap his neck. You should have done that. <laughs> yeah, we should probably murder all these guys then. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think yeah. I think you just you go. just signed it. All right, I, I could. I the could the crying the crying man uh, finally looks up through the sniffles and stares at Vic, and he's like, "This asshole needs to die." He stole me for everything I had. He took my business. I've been coming here every day for the last three weeks trying to get the courage to plug him. And I figure I'd join with you guys and look where it gets me. Well, He's a bad man. <laughs> now I'm thinking maybe we should also kill this dude and blame the whole thing on him. Hey, that's a great idea. Yeah, wait, wait, we, what? We have, we have to blame. We have, we've got to blame it on somebody, right? So yeah. this kid, that's who's right. obviously got a beef, he's here. Yeah. We, just, we have Raymond, you know, hook the sentry gun up, put a, a couple bullets in this dude. Wait, wait. What about all the witnesses? Oh, right. <laughs> Well, you know. At the mention of that, the dad is like, yeah, "Guys, we don't, we don't want any fucking trouble." Shut up, you! <laughs> We're talking here. Oh, what, what about the? What do we got here? We got a college kid and a mother, or a father and a daughter. What are the? What are the odds you think these guys go to the cops? <laughs> I think pretty good. Think There's a pretty good chance one of them has already called the cops. <laughs> 
I could go over and do a, a physical mask on both of them and then tell them to forget everything that they've seen. Wait, that's not a Men in Black ability. That's something you do on your allies. <laughs> oh. Oh, no, no. Did you ever blinky light me? Did you ever blinky light me? Yes. Repeatedly. <laughs> Alright, so how, what's going on? I, I say we just kill them all. and get out of here. Alright, but, they, but they're gonna come after the Hamptons again, though. It says, wait, 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 I, I, I can pay you, I can pay you, we got a lot of, we got a lot of money, we can work this out. Frank says, Vic, shut the fuck up. Shut up, Frank. <laughs> all right. I say we take all the money and the guns with us. That's fine, that's fine, take everything. But Vic, Forget how do we your... know you're not going to just kill the Hamptons after we leave here? How do we know that? You already said you're going to come after us. All right, and look, 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 look. If you're protecting George, George has hired you, he's got some muscle, then fine. That's going to be way too much of a pain in the ass for me. You fucking shot my cousin. My brother's in the bathroom probably bleeding out his asshole. I don't want any more part of this. You guys right. take what you want. You leave. We're square. All right, fine. So here's how it's going to work. That, see that big old tank in your doorway? Doorway. I'm going to park that thing in the back of the Hamptons for a couple weeks. <laughs> Who knows how long. You try to fuck with them, that thing will just do the same thing that happened to the fucking janitor in there, which, by the way, <laughs> you're probably going to check on him. <laughs> There's, like, blood sleep seeping out of the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> Does that sound good to you, Vic? It's fucking fine. The fuck out. We never met you. Give us your money. Yeah, we'll take everything they got. Yep. Frank just sighs and starts opening. Well, they don't open. They don't have registers. They, uh, he, he dials into his little uh, keypad like on his arm, and you see all your, uh, all your little uh, armbands light up with uh, money transferred. Can we take that guy's cybernetic arm? <laughs> <laughs> Now you're organ <laughs> harvesters. It's <laughs> cybernetic. And it's a trophy. Um, keep what Frank, you do. Frank just blanches and then hovers protectively over his brother and he's like, just leave us the fuck alone. I need to get him to a hospital. You can get him to All a right, hospital. Fine. We just want the arm. <laughs> <laughs> Not gonna hurt him any worse without the arm. What about that bracelet on Frank? That thing he was touching. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure I might like that. What do you got there, Frank? <sighs> Frank nods. He's like, it was my mother's. <laughs> it's a talisman. He just rips it off and throws it at you. <laughs> what else you got, Frank? <laughs> He's like, you All want right, my fucking underwear, too? Stuff. Actually, yes. All right, they've, uh, they go up to the counter, and they pull their guns and whatnot. Put them on the counter. You guys can grab them. All right, sounds good. And then, hey, uh, Brian, dude, you might want to get the fuck out of here now while the getting's good. I imagine, yeah, I imagine these you, guys are not yeah. going to be too happy with you after we leave. Now that those guys are, uh, yeah, run, father, daughter, run. Cry, crying guy is just, yeah, he just, <laughs> he walks out with a really awkward like gait of somebody that's just totally out of shape and upset, and just like runs out crying. I think he bangs his head against a drone at one point. He just keeps running. <laughs> Uh, hey, Vic, if you want to go back and kill the crying guy, you go right ahead. Yeah, all the other guys are just fleeing the premises now. You hear uh, sirens in the distance. Yes, yeah, we gotta go. Here. Run away! Alright, and that will... Uh... I would like to hack into the sentry still. I know. <laughs> I probably should have... Uh, you... There's no time! Yeah. You did Wait, the best first thing, which was start start off by completely disabling their decker, basically. <laughs> right. Um, so that's why I didn't have the turret. Normally the turrets appear as soon as it happens, but I wanted to have a good reward for you actually cleverly taking out the deck early on, so... Even by um, accident. By yeah. accident, yes. I was going to say, I was going to hack into the sentry. Yeah, so that's kind of what they're there for, is for the deck here. No, I mean, right now. You're going to hack... Ten minutes after we leave, it's just going to shoot the Fratellis. <laughs> Totally separate from any of our discussion. Yeah. Just Raymond, as he's walking out, is like, kill them all. <laughs> I like, like it. the end, yeah. epilogue, and then the sentry turret murdered everyone. <laughs> all these witnesses watched us walk out, <laughs> leaving them alive. They can't, they can't blame us, they just only end up dead. 
So you, re you return Moxie to George, and George is very pleased to learn that uh, it was actually the Fratellis that had squeezed his business, sabotaged his merchandise, robbed him of his stores, and then turned around and tried to demand more money out of him. We do tell him, though, that the Fratellis know that it was it, him. the hit was from him. Uh, yeah. We've warned him off as best we can, but I give him my number and tell him, like, if they, you know, fuck with you again, give us a call. Yeah, he's, he's, he's happy to get his daughter back. He's happy to learn the information. He's very upset to learn that now it was, that it basically came back to him. And yeah. he, had, he admonishes you for, he's like, you know, why did I hire you guys if it's going to come back to me? I wanted it done, like, subtly. There wasn't much chance of that. Everyone, everyone could see us and everyone knew exactly what we were there for, so. Yeah. Unless you wanted a bunch of innocent people murdered to cover it up. <laughs> That's not what you want, is it, Frank? So essentially what I would do is I would reward karma based on all these different factors. I would say, you know, hey, you saved the girl, that's worth something. Um, you got the information, that's worth something. You weren't able to make it look like an accident or blame on somebody else, so that's so you wouldn't get more there. So it's just kind of different factors you would get. Um, and then that would gear. And then you would get, you would end up with a lot of gear, <laughs> extra gear, because you could there, right. like guns and shit you could then sell. Lots of extra money. Yeah, and some extra money, and obviously the guy would pay you your reward. We'll just keep that little talisman, though. <laughs> we'll it actually that. says that that talisman is like a little, just a little trinket. It's nothing. <laughs> but that'd be a funny for like next time if you guys were like trying to sell this. Like, what is this? And the guy could like say it was nothing or something. So yeah, what'd you guys think? That was our intro beginner mission. Not bad. We seem to be able to effectively simplify the rules for the purpose of... I think so, yeah. So I think the actual rules are way more complicated than what we were doing, but I think our, our simplified version works well. Yeah, yeah, and I think you can slowly trickle in some things um, as you go and just decide basically how complex you want it to be, really. I mean, I'm, like I said, I'm not a huge stickler for a lot of that thing. I just want to keep the story and the action going and the fun bits rather than the trying to like look up every single rule. Mm -hmm. uh, and just and, it, and the system actually lends itself to making it like you can just come up with a, you know, system. It's like, right. here's what I'm going to use for his defense and all this kind of stuff. I had a yeah. picture for Vic all ready to go in case you asked. Oh, yeah. <laughs> in case we asked what we look like. Yeah. There he is. <laughs> That's the guy. So the, the other guy wasn't happy with us, how we handled that at the end. Uh, no, just because uh, now he's he's Vic and the Fratellis know that it was George Hampton that had sent you guys, and had uh, and went back to him. So I was telling it that I would I would reward it based on the different factors you did. Like I'd say you know you saved the girl, so that's a karma. Uh, you got the information that it was the Fratellis that had squeezed Hampton, so that's rewarded karma. Um, maybe reward karma for taking like two of them out or something. And then you wouldn't get any extra for um, sneakily doing it or doing it and blaming it on somebody else or somehow not having a trace back to George, basically. You guys were very aggressive, too. That was, I was watching another stream where uh, they, they also did Food Fight, and these people, like, got in, had a table, like, listened into the conversations, <laughs> like, ordered food. <laughs> and then, like, there's a state where you're supposed to have Vic just get up and leave because, like, you want to force the players to do something, and they had to, like, Vic was at the door before finally one of them, like, said something to him, whereas you guys just came in and almost just went guns blazing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so this is, this whole restaurant was basically mob-owned, and everybody, um, I'll reveal them for you. What's the rest of it? It is just a store in my restroom. Did the chandler die? <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, I don't know what the bleed out. I think it's every combat turn they take one more damage. He actually wasn't dead yet. Like the the other guy was actually dead plus like negative one, so he had like three or four more turns before he was just dead dead. Okay. The janitor was actually just really, really injured. He wasn't dying yet. Gotcha. But he was almost in that state. And at that point, that was enough. Cause, so the, the interesting thing is, these aren't monsters you're fighting most of the time. These are people. So right. Reese had the right move and be like, well, let me try and talk this guy and see if, like, they'll surrender. And sure enough. Yeah. <laughs> like, hey, you've almost murdered half of us. We're going to go ahead and surrender now. 